shit in this motherfucker to eat, man. Man, um, right after we returns, man, uh, things started to change, man. Um, you know, for the for the better or for the good, you know, some would say maybe. But um, right after that, man, we were uh, forced to leave from my home at that time, you know, to go live with our aunt, you know, and which started off off another cool journey, you know. Uh, you know, the maintenance people wouldn't come, you know, and fix stuff. You know, we would have floods down at the, you know, bottom floor. And, you know, one of the roofs were like, you know, it, it was just so much going on, man. And, you know, uh, my mom had to go to court and, you know, we had to move, man. And, you know, it was real hard times for my mom. You know, no no son, no, no, no child, you know, want to look at their mom and just, you know, see their mom crying and knowing they're going through something. You're too young to understand or you're too maybe young to even help. But, um, yeah, man, right after that, you know, we were, you know, forced to leave, you know, stuff behind, you know, far as like neighborhood friends, you know, people that we, we came outside almost every day or they came to knock on our door just to say, Hey, they coming outside, man. And it was, it was, it was a fun experience, man. Like I said, uh, um, things were changing. Things were changing. I was leaving River Turns, going on to junior high school, man. Like I said, new beginnings and, um, throughout the summer, you know, uh, as my mom, you know, and as we would try to find, you know, a new place, you know, to live and stuff like that. Um, we would spend, you know, the summer, you know, with my aunt, you know, uh, the bond would get closer. Uh, everything would be so, you know, so dope, man. Brittany, you know, really stuck out, you know, to me, you know, she was the first person I made laugh um, in River Terrace when I came in the class back in 1999. You know, we just had this bond and we just had this special relationship that we always just carried into adult life. You feel me? They always say if things, you know, leave or things, you know, um, you know, go away, you know, and whether it's a year or five years later or whatever, you know, if it returns, you know, it's meant, you know, and um we saw each other in junior high school uh you know we we we, we did talk <laughs> we did talk over the summer uh the thing was you know we, we we she was doing her own thing and i was just basically doing my own thing you feel me i was just doing my own thing but she knew this i was coming to shaw and i'm at shaw at this time and at this time you know guys man i'm really getting into wrestling not only that um I'm, I'm about, what, 12 years old, will be going on 13 years old in a, in a month from then. And, you know, that's around the time where I would stop, stop walking. And, man, those days of leading up to me stop walking. And also, um, another thing uh, played a factor into it because um, I would leave my wheelchair uh, at, at school, you know. I catch the school bus to school, uh, leave my wheelchair at school, and I can be able to walk and go home and stuff like that because, you know, we, we, we live anywhere really wasn't too many spaces to really to keep the wheelchair or whatnot. But, um, so, like, I, I, I will, you know, leave it at school, come home, um, do my thing. But when I get to school, and because I will fall a lot, you know, I was, you know, recommended by a, a 
physical therapist and maybe my you know my mom also used the wheelchair so you won't hurt yourself you know I'll fall I hit my head one time you know I fell and sprained my ankles numerous of times where it didn't feel bad I was out of school for maybe three uh weeks or so maybe a whole month you know so man you're like and throughout the time leading like I said throughout the time leading up to you know where my legs just got weaker you know I was more so in the wheelchair you feel me I wanted to get out and walk and, and every chance that I could I did but you know leading up to it I just felt like man my, my legs just kept giving out on me kept giving out and it was just one time where I was going to the bathroom and man it was just like all right man i'm going to the bathroom get up and walk and i fell and when i fell i think i knocked something you know down or whatnot and you know it was a, a really defining moment it was kind of like stressful you know it was just like damn you know like what's next what's next You know, around that time, you know, that's where I, I stopped walking. So I, w I would use my wheelchair majority of the times and stuff like that. I, you know, wear my bracelets to try to help me, you know, walk. But man, either the, the damn things were, you know, getting so as I got older, the more they got uncomfortable, the more they got uncomfortable as I got older, man. And it, it was crazy because uh, I had the braces where uh, they were little. You know, my sister had to help me uh, get them on or whether my mother wasn't, you know, if she was off from work, she had helped me, you know, get dressed in the morning. Um, if my mother had to go to work, of course, my sister, you know, would get up and help me, man and man. And um, I'm going to get back to that story. And I just, you know, I thank all my uh, sisters and brothers, man, um, and the relationships and the relationship that I have with them is is amazing. You know, it's amazing. Um you know, I talk about, you know, not being comfortable with myself and, you know, just, you know, not, you know, being comfortable with my hands at one point. You know, my sister knew that, you know, and how I would, you know, you know, it, it, she she just knew that. And she was just telling me at times, nigga, be you. You feel me? Like, be you, 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 you something special. So, you know, and whether I, I heard that from her or whether I heard that from strangers, you know, from strangers um in public or whatnot i'd be on the bus and you know a stranger woke up and be like hey what's going on bro you know they try to chat with me man how you man how you get in the wheelchair man you know man i have a disability i was born with a disability and stuff like that man you can get up out that chair man you know i, I had a guy who was a bus attendant who was eight you know for the school bus um you know and he told me about a story and it always stuck with me in the back of my mind and you know when i was younger around my teenage years i thought i thought it was <laughs> anything's possible but i thought maybe you know hey this could happen you know like hey man whatever you you know put your mind to it uh you keep working hard on something man hey you could walk one day you you never know you know he was telling me about a story how he knew someone and they went to sleep and woke up and they was walking and i was like you know what hey man um it that's cool that's cool i think uh god make all of us for a reason maybe that situation where um the guy or girl you know who went to sleep and woke up you know that th that was maybe what that they were meant to be here for for someone to even see that or for them to to truly live out an inspiration for others you know um i take it as you know because my brother man um i love i love my little brother like i said i love i love everybody in my in my family as far as my uh sisters and brothers man um i had to share a room with my little brother i think that was the only like irritating thing but my little brother right hand honey grand man um the only thing you know i think you know because i had a disability um my brother you know didn't understand much too you know like man he was walking one point nanny in the wheelchair and you know my brother you know wanted you know a big brother or someone closer um to him that he can just confine into and and go out to go or go just hang out with you know so it ain't got to be so much obstacles that we got to go around you know like i always would feel some type of way and it's like everybody's going to a party but the party on the third floor you feel me and i got my wheelchair so it's like well you know why i just stay in the house or I just do that. Or, you know, like, that's why I took a back seat of just, you know, going over a lot of people's houses. You know, I only go over a few if it's wheelchair accessible for me. But 
Um, man, like my brother will always, you know, used to say, man, man, I wish you weren't in the wheelchair. Man, I wish you. And, you know, I, that will always sort of bother me in a way because I was like, man, like he made all of us for a reason. He built all of us the way, you know, we are, you know, and whether um, we are, whether we see fit, whether we are not comfortable within ourselves or whether we get to the point where we, where we be comfortable in ourselves, it's just who we are. And I feel as though now that the fact that I, I'm getting there and, and coming to that moment of being comfortable, I want to chill with everybody. I want to show everybody, you know, what I'm trying to become and becoming. You feel me? It's nothing wrong with having a sibling um, who has a, a disability or who, ha who is disabled. You know, they always say um, the people are afraid of what they don't understand. You feel me? And I think that's what my little uh, brother was. He was afraid of it because he didn't understand it. You know, he was just, you know, he knew, okay, man, he's smart. But it was just like, I, I don't know. Especially in the last uh, year and a half, going on two years, I have learned to just be myself, learn to not just live for other people and not living off of trying to make other people happy. You know, we only got one life that we live. You only, you know, like, hey, times are getting shorter. We're living in a pandemic right now. Um, Like I said, I wanted to start this documentary, man, because I want more. Like I said, you know, I want my family to have more. You know, it's not over, you know, attention or, or anything like that. I want to share my story to people out there that says I'm an inspiration or that's looking for inspiration. You know, I talk with plenty of people each and every week, um, new people, man, and just, you know, you, you never know where, where life can take you. You never know where things can lead you, man. So, um, man, I, I, I just keep looking forward each and every day, man, to just, just, just work hard, to just keep grinding and busting my ass and proving that I can do something. A lot of people, you know, uh, have a different phases in their life where they, you know, go through stuff or they try different things and they no longer um, acting on them things like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I take um, what I uh, w w was was taught and was instilled in my brain and also the, the, the passion, the belief, the faith that I have and turn that into something way more. You feel me? So that's 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 just a little that's just a rant. <laughs> that's just a rant of how I feel. And just no, be honest, we're just on some true shit, man. On some true shit. You know, I mentioned, you know, um my, my sisters and my brothers, man. Um my older sister, you know, Robin. You know, of course, like I said, you know, my mom had to work. Uh, my sister would be right there, you know, helping me uh, in the morning, uh, getting my shoes on, trying to help me put my braces on. I'm like, ah, my football up, my football up. And she was just like, stop yelling at me. <laughs> you feel me? It was just so many moments or, you know, just, I mean, for those who out there who got older sisters and maybe you're the youngest brother or whatever, I mean, I, I know you know, baby, that feeling, I don't know. Mom, you know, she hanging out. She got that weekend. Oh, she going to go chill and the big sister in charge. And then she want to, you know, be the boss. Oh, man. Them, oh, man. Mm, 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 mm. But yeah, man. <laughs> Other than that, man, um, we had fun, man. We really, really had fun. Like I said, we was raised um, by a single mom. And, you know, we, we have father figures, you know, from C to daddy, you know, to like, man. Like, they will always have a special place in our heart. You feel me? But uh, I think, you know, um now that i see this vision and i want i want my family to come back closer you know and it's just like um it seemed like once you know grandma passed away it just seems like things started to, you know everybody doing their own thing and the reason you know i mean me personally um i'm not that type of drama person that feed off of you know drama type you know i want to 
you know, put my all into something, something that I'm passionate about, something that I love and, and go after it, man. Because um, if you, like I said numerous of times, you wake up and you see that every day is the same and ain't nothing changing. And, you know, you want to go out here and get your own and do what you got to do. You know, like you, you, you got to work for it. It's nobody is going to hand you nothing. Nobody's going to hand you nothing. You know, a lot of people are afraid to, to do certain things. You feel me? And, and, and some people are just doing what society tell them to do. You feel me? I'm not doing what society tell me to do. Society tells me to just, oh, go be a rapper, be a basketball player, uh, do this or whatnot like that. No, no. I want to create my own path, tell my own story, and leave my own legacy, man. Uh, and, and so my so my family can be proud of me. You feel me? I, uh, I, I attempted college twice, you know, and it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. Um, and now that I've been podcasting, hey, man, hey, the sky's the limit, man. The sky is the limit. Now that I got to uh, junior high school, man, um, man, oh, man, like, <laughs> like I said, uh, me and Brittany, you know, we'll, you know, we'll pass each other by, say hi in there. You know, we still had that little crush on one another, but she was faking. You know, I just, she was faking. So, um, you know, man, I'm, I'm being straight up. I didn't have a lot of girlfriends, man. I didn't have a lot of girlfriends. I had a lot of uh, girls uh, that I went to school with that I had crushes on. Or maybe, maybe some in the neighborhood or whatnot. You feel me? Like a girl was told me, uh, one, one woman told me, oh, girl. She was a girl at that point. <laughs> you know, I don't date, you know, I don't date boys in the wheelchair. I don't, I don't date handicapped people. So, you know, I was like, mm, you feel me? So, hey, you know, shit happens. <laughs> shit happens. But, you know, um, I get to junior high school, man. And, you know, I meet someone else, you know, in this, you know, relationship. Uh, it was actually put put together or kind of a hookup by uh, a friend at the time. Um, he was just like, yo, man, I, I think she liked you. Uh, you like her? And he was just like, yo, I think he liked you. And, you know, we started talking, exchanged phone numbers and stuff like that. One thing led on to another, man, and we were, we were in something. You know, we were in something. And I talked about this moment, you know, on my podcast because, of course, you know, as you get older, it gets funny. It gets hysterical. Um, you know, uh, we were just doing our thing. We were just doing our thing. And, uh, uh be, I think it was be, before this, um, of course, like me and Shorty, we'd be together and everything. And my fiance now, who was just, you know, my friend then, uh, we were in a class together. You know, we, we still had that sort of thing for one another and the lights were off. The, uh, I think the teacher told everybody they could bring a PlayStation in just to, you know, it was right at the end of the school year or whatnot. And I kissed her. Hello. Hey, man. What's up, man? Nothing. Just waking up on that. What's up? Um, oh, yeah. I was... Waking up from your... Waking up from your nap, nap, huh? You remember, you remember that time when we was in um, um, junior high school, right? And um, and we was in the classroom, and the lights was out, and you and and and, and, and you kissed me. Oh my god! It's like you really wanted to be about this. You like put your lips on me first. I put I put my lips on you first. So, yeah. t okay, tell me what happened. Tell t tell the story. I want to hear the story from your mouth then. What happened then? I mean, me and you both was there. You know what happened. I mean, I, I know we both was there. So I'm asking you, use your story then. So as I said, you kissed so, me. Yeah. When, when was we talking about watching a movie or some shit? Something like that. They, I think they was playing the game. They was playing the PlayStation. Mm. 
You know, I, I told her to come here. I was about to whisper. I kissed her. And uh, we always, you know, joke around this story how she kissed me, but I kissed her, blah, 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 like that. So one thing led to another. But the guy who hooked me up with the shawty in junior high school, um, my fiance now told him. So then he told the next person and went on from there. So, you know, it was a big old scene at the end of the uh, end of the, end of uh, school that day. So I was just at home like, wow, like that was a day. You feel me? She like, oh, did you kiss her? And Brittany like, I ain't got to fight. No, but it was hysterical. But on my main story, man, uh, uh, after all of this, you know, um, I'm like, nah, nah, I ain't do that. I ain't do that. So uh, we leave class one day and uh, the A's ain't even there. The A's ain't there that day. Oh, no, they are there, but we just said, you know what? We just going to leave class. We get on the elevator, man, kissing and kissing and kissing, trying to get freaky or getting freaky. The elevator opened up, man, and man, oh, man. <laughs> the story, uh, what I was like, 14 at the time, man? That was the story, man. For real, the principals and the teachers, man, was giving me was giving me cold ass water. You know, I like cold water, man. Everybody know me. I like cold water. They was giving me water bottles and shit like that. It was like, man, we gotta calm this breathing. Like, like I just can't imagine the ass whooping that he about to get. <laughs> like, I can't imagine the ass whooping that he about to get. And then I think what made it even so more scarier though, like that school bus ride going home was the longest, mo. It was so the longest, and I, it was so the longest, and I think she got dropped, and we caught the same school bus, I think she got dropped off first, if I'm not mistaken, or whatever like that, but, man, it was so long, and then I think, um, see, because we used to, um, and I think the school bus, uh, attendant knew that we was gonna get it somehow, well, because we used to kiss on the school bus or whatever, she ain't used to say nothing, but when she wasn't, you know, there over there, and we had, like, a, a, a substitute attendant for that, they'd be like, uh, 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 but, you know, uh, she kind of like smirked and laughed at us. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, this is not funny. This is not funny. And, you know, my mother sometimes would be sitting on the couch or be in the room. You know, she was standing there like, I'm ready. Bring your ass here, boy. Like, oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. Good times. Good times. <laughs> good times. Good times. Life. Man, oh man, life. Yo, man, life is all about the moments, the good moments, them special moments, man, that you cherish, you know, with yourself, cherish with your family, your loved ones, and also, man, with each other. Life. <laughs>